Hey, welcome back. So we're going to do a little bit of a demonstration on how line of sight works. It's pretty simple once you get a handle on it, but I know there have been a lot of questions and there are a couple visual bugs that can make it a little bit difficult to discern why a unit's line of sight is being blocked. So looking at this battlefield right here, I'm just attacking a city. It has a single population, so just one levy in it, which is perfectly fine for the purposes of this demonstration. So we have two warriors and two javelin throwers, and although it doesn't say it in their stat block, javelin throwers are effectively gunners. They cannot fire indirectly, they need to have direct line of sight. And that's going to make it a little bit easier to show how line of sight works. So fundamentally, there are a few things that block line of sight. Specifically, friendly or enemy units, mountains, other districts, and that can be makers quarters, agriculture quarters, whatever, administrative centers, etc. Uh, and forests. All of those will block your line of sight. However, if you are two tiles above the obstruction in terms of elevation, then you are able to shoot a target. So let's do a little bit of a demonstration. You'll see right here that neither of these units are able to currently shoot the levies. This javelin thrower is one tile above this uh, warrior in front of him, and this javelin thrower is on even terrain. Now, if I were to move this warrior out of the way, this javelin thrower would then be able to shoot. However, this javelin thrower would not. And the reason for that is when you are shooting diagonally, you need over 50% of your line of sight cleared. So what that means is every tile that is between you and the target uh, should be clear in terms of line of sight to at least 51% of those tiles. You will see if I move this javelin thrower up here, though it may be a little far, I think it is slightly out of range. But from here, if this were an archer, I would be able to shoot this levy with this unit without a line of sight penalty or if this had three range, or if this were a crossbow, or whatever it is. Now, if I move these warriors out of the way, you'll see this unit still is unable to shoot the levy. And that's because 50% of its line of sight is still blocked by this warrior right here. So what I'm going to do is move this warrior to this location here. And now I can shoot again. Now, I'm going to uh, move uh, this unit right, uh, well, it can say right there. I'm going to hope the levees come out, and then I can demonstrate the high ground right here. And you can see from the high ground, because I am two tiles above this obstruction right here, that is obstructing 50% of my line of sight, I'm still able to shoot the levees. Now... There is one critical thing to be on the lookout for when you're dealing with line of sight, which is that forests don't always appear properly on the battle map. So when you're looking at the different tiles, you need to be aware that not everything is going to show forest very clearly. For instance, right here says forest. It doesn't really look like a forest though. You can see a couple little squares on it. You might not assume that is a forest at first glance. But, because it is adjacent to a city, they tend to get these um, different squares around them to sort of represent city development. But it blocks the forest tile display from spawning on that tile, it seems. So take a look carefully at the ground around you when you're determining line of sight. And I think that's one of the major confusing factors is that the terrain isn't always displaying properly. But if you hover over it, it does. Okay, so as a little bonus, I want to show you how to use direct fire units and javelin throwers a little bit more effectively. I do think javelin throwers are in a bit of a rough spot, but you can make more efficient use of them than you might think you could. So let's just jump right into this manual battle here. So when you are attacking with javelin throwers, what you want to do is keep your front line clear. So they're, they're going to spawn in the city. They just have this one levy. They're going to spawn right on their flag. 
but in larger battles, you're pretty much always going to have line of sights uh, onto you know their front line in some way, shape, or form. So what you can do is you deploy your units without any melee units on your front line. After you deploy, you can use all your javelin throwers to shoot, and then you can fill in your front line with your reserve units. Like so. And these will protect your javelin throwers from melee attacks. What you're then able to do after that is you can cycle your units back, like so, and then shoot again with your javelins. Now, typically, you would have a larger army than this. What you would do after you shoot with the javelins a second time is move up a second group of reserve forces. So you continually cycle out your front line along a condensed front with the enemy using the terrain and other features to your advantage. You want to keep the front line as small as possible because you are trying to continually use half your army to cycle in and out to block for your units. So here we can shoot once again and that'll clear out the levees and take us to the city. So that's just a quick little tip on how to use javelin throwers a little bit more effectively, but the same applies to things like crossbows and musketeers and all that good stuff later in the game. Now, when you're deploying defensively, you don't want to leave that gap to get to your javelin throwers, so you will still deploy half of your melee units on the front line to serve as blockers so they can't reach your javelin throwers. You cycle your units back, and then you throw your javelins and then cycle fresh units forward. So you want to have a line of melee behind your main firing line and then a line of melee in front. Now, one problem with this is that it's only going to work if you have missile superiority. You have to be able to force the enemy to want to come to you. If they have a lot of archers or they have the Samnahaya or anything that can do indirect fire and in sufficient numbers, that's not going to be a strategy that will work as effectively and you're going to have to take greater risks. However, if you do have a sufficient number of them or maybe they only have one or two ranged units and they're mostly melee, you can use the strategy to great effect and it helps you absorb damage across multiple units, lowering the risk that you're going to lose any given unit. So thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. By the way, if you've ever sworn that you've initiated an offensive battle and end up on the defense, it's because the AI can attack you in your final position while you're still moving to that position.